Hello and welcome to the Mechanism 8 Fusion Reactor Guide. In this uh, guide I will show you how to produce the fuel to uh, get a fusion reactor running and the various machines that you need to do to produce that fuel. Alright, so starting up, you're going to need some electric pumps with the water filter upgrade that will produce heavy water. You then need an electrolytic separator um, pumping out the f uh, pump, getting the heavy water pumped in, and it's producing oxygen in deuterium. The deuterium comes out the blue side, so keep that in mind. I like to do four electric pumps because that will keep your deuterium supply very high. Next up, we have solar evaporation plants, and the to get the tritium ne needed for the DT fuel is a bit of a complicated process. You need at least two solar evaporation multi-block structures. Um, you want one producing brine and the other using the lithium that is being, I mean the brine going in and lithium coming out. So I have two uh, structures here producing brine because for each brine multi-block structure that you have you are able to power five neutron solar neutron activators. But we'll get that to that in a bit. So we have both of these brine towers pumping into this tower, which is outputting liquid lithium. You then output the liquid lithium into a rotary condensator, and you want to have it decondensating so that you are getting gaseous lithium. The gaseous lithium goes into the solar neutron activators, which then produces uh, tritium. Now each brine tower, as I said previously, is capable of furnishing about f uh, f five solar neutron activators, so with two brine towers you're able to have ten. I have a bit of lithium stored up in here because, I mean tritium, yeah lithium, stored up in here because the reactor wasn't running for a little while while I got this all set up. So never mind that, that's what this extra one is for, it's just slowly getting rid of it. Next, you need to build the reactor. Let's go over here where I have the base of the reactor already created. So you need to make this star structure. You then just continue building this star structure all the way up, like so. You then go out one more. Because this is the final layer of the star. You then go back up on the star, and then you cap it off on the top, and then you just fill in this top layer right here. There we go. And then finally you need to put the reactor controller in there. The reactor controller is what makes this multi-block structure finish. Now you need a few more pieces. You need a laser focus matrix, we'll get to that in a bit. And then you need these reactor ports. Now I have three on this side. I generally do two on one side and one on the other, but for the purposes of this, this will be fine. You need three total. One to output power and two to input deuterium and tritium. One for each. So now that this is formed, we can go over to the one over here. Now I have this laser matrix set up. Um, it's overkill. You only technically need one. It'd just take forever to charge up this. Now you have these lasers being focused into these laser tractor beams, which you can then change the output on. Let me grab myself a crescent hammer and demonstrate this. Just right click on the side and hey, look at that. You have it going. Now be careful because the laser will break blocks. So. We now have a sad reactor over here. But we have all these lasers being dumped into this single laser amplifier, which I have the redstone set to high because then it won't be outputting until it has a high redstone input. It currently has this 1.36 gigahertz of RF per tick, um, which is a lot. And you then aim that at the laser focus matrix and since the reactor is already running, let's kill it by uh, right here. 
There we go. No heat, no heat fuel. Now we need to start it up. So let's go back into the mechanism and grab the holothorm fuel. The holothorm fuel is pretty easy. It's just coal and gold dust in a metallurgic infuser to make the vat. Then you then uh, put the deuterium and the tritium in a rotary condenserator. Let's just do that for the time being. Rotary condenserator right here. No, sorry, not rotary condenserator. Uh, chemical infuser. Sorry, chemical infuser. And then you can output to a gas tank. Let me just grab a creative energy cell real quick. There we go. Replace the gas tank. Dang it. Grab another gas tank. And you'll notice that we have DT fuel in there. Alright, so that's that's handy. Now what do we do with this DT fuel? Well, to get the reaction started, you need a empty holothorum, and then you just stick it inside, and you get a filled holothorum, or holorum, not holothorum. You just stick it inside right there. Now we have this reactor all set up. Let's set the injection rate at three because that is what the brine is able to handle. I have a bit more stored up in the system, so it could run at a higher injection rate for a small time. But let's toggle this lever. Look at that. We now have a reaction inside. And let's go to the heat. It has quite a bit of heat, which is simply because we had so much uh, laser power go into it at a single time. Now, the problem with this reactor is it outputs so much power that you need a multi-block structure from mechanism called the induction RF thing. I have no actually, induction matrix, there it is, um, in order to be able to store this power. To do that, you just get uh, let's actually make it real quick. I'll just make a small one. You need three parts. You need the induction casing, the induction port, and then the induction cell and provider. Let's pop this down right here onto the toolbar. To do it, I'm just going to make a small one. It can be any size. Do an induction provider there, an induction cell there. And you put the induction ports right next to the induction providers, and then you just close it up. I boo booed on that. And now we have an induction matrix that's capable of storing 204,000 uh, giga RF, so a uh, thousand millions. So it's pretty impressive that that small of an induction thing with the ultimate is able to store that much. Now you can either have the induction port directly up to the reactor port or you can use a cryostabilized flux duct from thermal dynamics. I personally prefer the cryostabilized flux duct because it looks really cool. In any case, that's how we get the um, reactor and let's get rid of that because it is currently taking up the DT fuel and you'll notice that the DT fuel is going back up but if we set it at 4 it is going down because we do not have enough brine production to output tritium fast enough so let's take it back to 3 and it will constantly be running and this is all now self-sustaining because the biggest part of getting it is just the resource investment to build these uh, solar evaporation towers. In any case, I hope you enjoyed and were informed about Mechanism's 8th fusion reactor. I ha will have the 
resources necessary to build everything put at the end of this video. In any case, I hope you enjoyed. Until next time, bye-bye now.